Good morning everybody. Well we're down here where the dam is going to go on the five acre pond building project. We got about 10,000 or so, 12,000 yards of dirt to move to build this dam because I got to bring all this up to that height up there which is about 14, 13, 14 foot of elevation up all the way across to way up there. Um, and we'll get Tim to come over here with the dozer. We're going to start. Tim about fell in a mud hole. Stripping. It's pretty wet out here. It rained again pretty bad. We're going to start stripping all this topsoil, pushing it to the backside of the dam, exposing the clay. And uh, I'm going to go up here and finish cleaning up these burn piles. But yeah, we're going to. Uh, Try to get some dirt moved this week. I'm like I said, get him to strip this. And we'll take all, cut all this clay out right here. Haul it over here. And that will be used for the pond dam. Well, let's get to it. So now we are stripping all the mud and topsoil. Which is pretty much all mud. See how this platters. But uh, I got Tim up there working where I figured it was a little drier. He's taking the dozer and shoving it all down. That is where the dam's going to go. It's going to go all the way across and then tie in to that hillside over there. And I'm actually going to contour it to blend right into that. So, I mean, that's the shape it's going to be. So, we're taking all this bad dirt and throwing it behind the dam. And that'll make the back slope. And then we'll cut all cut all the good clay out and that's what the dam will be built out of regardless this topsoil has so much clay in it you could use this and it would completely hold the water back but we got good clay so we're going to use this so i just throw this on the back side that way it will be a little bit easier for it to grow grass and everything Plus, it's a good place to get rid of it. Stuff's got a little bit of sticks in it. You can bury it in the back right there on the slope. We don't have to worry about all these sticks floating out here in the pond when it fills up. I'm just mixing those. Actually, a burn pile right there, mixing all that together, and throwing it down here into the bottom. Once I cut this dirt out, all I got to do is just break it out over top of it. Fill the uh, hole back in. Mud, mud, mud. I don't know if this is going to hold the truck up tomorrow or not hauling dirt. I have a feeling it's going to get a little mushy. But we will find out. All you can do is just strip this off and at least getting it raked over with the dozer to get rid of all those ruts from when we burned out here four months ago that are full of water.
strip all this and just chunk it down there out of the way. So that when it's time to start cutting our dirt, it's ready. It's strange dirt out here. Like this side is yellow with white clay. And then right on the other side of the creek right there is just as red as it can be. Really wish it was all like that. That's nice dirt over there. Alright, I'm going to keep on doing this and I'll get another video. So now I'm going to start cutting this from up here. As you can see, the water just laid in all those ruts and didn't drain because it was a lot wetter than it is now when we're out here trying to burn. There's no way to get rid of all those ruts. And they just filled with water and they've held water and now the only way to do it is just come out here with the excavator and strip this off, throw it over here, then I'll throw it down in there where it'll ultimately stay. Tim's taking the dozer. He's pushing about 150 feet there. It's not really practical to push it any farther than that. get him to shove the other direction and just throw it down over the hill once he gets that little strip right there done. I mean the ground's fairly hard, somewhat dry under all this mud, so it kind of, it really did seal it off. It kept the good dirt dry, so I guess that's one positive, but it, it's still going to be mushy with this, the groundwater so high. a lot of ruts. Really nothing at all we can do about it. On the bright side, I uh, was packing some orders last night to come in. Justin was a great salesman for hoodies. Actually, I think his little video sold about five or six of them. And, uh, I was packing them up last night, getting them ready to be shipped out, and I was noticing that at almost, I think the count was 497 items that people have ordered already. I started the, I opened the website January 3rd or 4th, I think it was the 4th, I know it was the 3rd, I started shipping stuff out. This was, my first round of mailing receipts was for the fourth. And uh, boy, we kept the post office busy. It was uh, it was a lot of orders. So almost 500 items have been sold. So thanks to each and every one of you who have ordered something. I greatly appreciate it. And I really do enjoy, uh, I've had several people either on Facebook, the uh, fan page, or Instagram, or just send me an email of the uh, of their stickers put on stuff or wearing the shirt. So I thoroughly enjoy seeing that. So feel free to share your pictures when you get your stuff. It's been pretty fun doing it. I never would have thought there had been that many people that wanted stuff like that, but I'm glad I finally got back around to doing it. try to get uh, cats going before too long. I just haven't had time to really sit down and figure out who I want to make them. Find somebody local that does like the embroidery stuff would be nice. I just gotta sit down and do my research. Figure out what's the best route for that. A lot of stuff going on. I'll try to do the koozies too. I think there'll be a demand for that maybe. If not, I'll have plenty of them. Got plenty of shirts right now. I've been, well, it seems like every time I uh, I run out of something, I'll order 50 or 60 more. And then they'll sit, and then all of a sudden within like three days, it seems like it's all gone. I haven't figured it out. 
once I think that one thing's hot selling, it won't sell, and then something else will. It's hard to keep and keep track of what all I need. Because you'll have five or six shirts left, and then you'll get one order, and everybody ordered that size. The next thing you know, that's out. And you're like, oh crap, I gotta order more. Whenever I 
I get to a good part where I can get a nice big full scoop, might not be in this video, I'll get a big full scoop and I'll go stand beside the bucket and that'll give you a good perspective of how big the bucket is. I know it's hard to tell on camera the size of some of these things. All this water to run out of here. Eh, that might be deep enough. Let's see if we can get out of here now. Don't stay put. We're gonna rock. I've got the whole area stripped of topsoil and it's all piled up against the tree line here so it will be, become the toe of the dam and Tim's been blading that off I got all that stripped you can see the dirt road up against the creek channel down there he's finishing stripping that off so you can tell it's a pretty big site the water level is there's a flag right I see somewhere right in there and it goes all the way across to about the other side of that brush pile over there. Uh, acres and acres of water we will back up. But I'm gonna go ahead and dig my ditch for the core to key this, this new dam in. I'm gonna start right here at this water line flag and go all the way down to the creek. We're gonna leave it open for right now and build this half of the dam. That way it won't start backing up any water. And then when we're ready to put the overflow in, we'll, uh, finish that off and set the pipe and riser and everything and then go ahead and dam it up and get the dam built real quick so we'll go ahead and get this cut in here and uh take it on down there to the creek it's about 300 and some feet i would say or about 300 feet rocking and rolling on the core trench here now well I might as well get this out of the way and i can show you how big the bucket is on this thing
it's a very, very big scoop. I know it's hard to tell in the videos how big that is, <laughs> but I'm right at six feet tall. And uh, there was a lot of dirt above my head. So I know it's always deceiving exactly how much dirt I'm moving, but that's a fairly good sized scoop of dirt every time I get a full one.
I'm horrible at. I cannot dig a straight ditch. I'm horrible at it. Never been good at it.
We got the core trench dug. As you can tell, it kind of comes down and the dam is going to start curving about midway and tie back into this hillside over here. So I just kind of mimic the shape of that with the core. Like I say, it doesn't have to be pretty. It's just got to serve the purpose of locking the new dam in place. So we're going to fill it all the way to right here, which is about right here where the creek starts and we're going to build this side of the dam leave the creek open so it does not fill with water and then we'll come in when we're ready and tie the dam into this hillside over here when we're ready to start backing up water because once we put this in the water will stop and uh, it'll start backing up and and then the pond will start filling up so we pretty much got to be ready to rock and roll when we do that <laughs> 